How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Creator's Process. Uh, today, I am in the home of Lyndon. How are you doing today, man? I'm good, thanks, Dave. That's good, that's very good. So, for people who are watching, uh, what do you do for yourself? Okay, well, my day job, I work in uh, online training, so compliance training, and it's as, or also known as e-learning. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a combination of graphic design and instructional design. Yeah. So because originally uh, I was a graphic designer many, many, many years ago. Yeah. So, oh, that's awesome. So that's what I do with myself as a day job. Yep. Yeah. And so when it comes to the arts, what do you do? Um, well, I tend to mainly do drawing, but my style, I suppose, is a bit painterly as well. Um, okay. So I, I went to art school way back in the early nineties. Uh, or late 80s, early 90s, and um, I made the decision then to go down the graphic design path instead of the fine art path, but over the years I've always thought, mm, should I have gone and done fine art, But because most of my friends were all fine art students back mm -hmm. then, so it's a long time ago. <laughs> Quite a while ago, but to revisit it. <laughs> yeah. What was the, I guess, you said that you decided to go down the graphic art, uh, graphic design path instead of the fine art, was there a reason why you decided to go down um, that way? Well, I always loved graphic design and especially in the early 90s graphic design had a bit of a um, popularity like the Face magazine from the UK and a yes. lot of the designs back then were... So as much as I loved drawing and painting back then even, I thought graphic design was more for me. Yeah. but. I think once I actually worked in a real environment, advertising studio and, and that, I learnt that it's not as glamorous <laughs> as yeah. it looks. So I, I sort of ended up moving out of that and then studying and going into a totally different career path. But then in my spare time, I started doing a lot of painting and drawing again, which oh, awesome. funnily enough, when I worked as a graphic designer, I didn't do any artwork outside oh, okay. of and of course with graphic design, as the 90s progressed, a lot of it was done on the computer anyway. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, no, that's yeah. interesting. And so what made you, or what inspired you to then start off with painting, when you got into painting? Um, well, it was drawing, but I started getting more painterly. Um, I remember back in the middle 2000s, I did some oil painting lessons and mm -hmm. I really got stuck into that. I love the smell of it, I love the yeah. texture, I just love getting dirty. Mm -hmm. um, that's the one thing I like about drawing and painting is is getting yourself dirty, getting stuff yeah. all over your hands, and your clothes and everything. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah. I have that same satisfaction as an artist that, you know, when you've created something, and you know, like you look, like after you've done a drawing or if you've done a charcoal drawing and you look at what you've done and then you look at your hands and they're like all, they've got covered in like smudged and all that. It's yeah. like, you know, it's good. It, it, there's a bit of satisfaction that can yeah, exactly. go and, But also it's, it's, yeah. it's listening to some music. I remember one time I was doing this big, gritty, dark drawing and I was listening to Nine Inch Nails. And oh, wow. <laughs> I was laughing at you. Because I think music can definitely influence, yeah. influence your work. Oh, absolutely. Like when you, you know, sometimes if you listen to a particular song that uh, just brings out a different vibe, brings out a different uh, feeling and emotion. And, you know, as they say, music is a different art form in itself that makes us feel stuff. Yeah. And, you know, so it makes sense that it uh, connects as painters and artists that mm. you put something on and then you just go like, your whole mind just expands into this different world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. And so, when did you start uh, painting? How long ago did you start painting? Well, as a kid, I used to draw. So, um, one of my earliest memories is I think I was about eight years old and I did this um, portrait of my sister who was a year or so younger than me. Okay. And I remember mum was really proud of it and she was showing everyone. And so, that's a one really good thing that mum was very supportive of my artwork. And I, awesome. I know a lot of people in the creative industries, whether they be um, visual artists or actors or whatever, sometimes their parents can be quite dismissive and so they'll go down the path of studying a profession rather than um, doing what they really want. So I was really pleased that mum was supportive and I don't know whether she would have been as supportive if, if I decided to go down the fine art path, Okay. but she was definitely supportive with me going down the, the path of being a graphic designer. I think it's always 
nice when you hear about, you know, that you have that support base because it's definitely good to have a good support base when doing this sort of thing because obviously... Especially from family. Yeah, definitely. Because it's like, you know, obviously we don't... When you're thinking about like the arts and all that sort of thing, most people obviously don't do it to make money at the end of the day. We just mm. do it because we're passionate about it and a lot of people just think, oh, well, why are you doing it when it doesn't, you know put food on the table and it's like, well, it's not about that. It's about yeah. more the creative aspect. And it's also to... feeding your soul. Yeah, exactly. Oh, food for the soul. Yeah, that's <laughs> that, right. That's where that came from. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but no, that's it. And it was, it's good that you had that um, support around you growing up. That was really good. Mm. And uh, so what are like some of your, so when it comes to your style of painting, so what, did, what inspired you to uh, work in that style? Well, my style's changed a little bit, especially over the last couple of years, because there was a, a time there where I just worked in ink, mm -hmm. uh, so black ink mixed with water. Yeah. And I remember back in the 2000s, because there, there was a time, like when I was a graphic designer, I didn't really do much artwork, and then when I stopped that and studied and started working in a different area, I didn't. And then I picked up my stuff and started going to drawing sessions in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So they weren't necessarily um, classes where they taught you how to draw. It was like the life drawing sessions we go to today. People do their own thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I started using ink and I just really got into that. And then I stopped it for a period of time. So okay. from, and this is weird. So from the 2007 until 2015, I didn't really do any artwork. Oh, wow. I, I don't know why. I started studying. Um, I, I started studying something else, and for just some reason, I didn't do anything. And I, I don't know. Maybe it was restricting my soul or something. But yeah. I finally started picking up in 2015. I remember going back to a friend of mine. She was running a, a drawing session, mm -hmm. and I just loved it. And, and I haven't stopped. So yeah. when I started back then, it was ink again. Um, and then I started experimenting with different media. So yeah. these days, um, probably my media of choice is an art graph. So it's a flat disc shaped oh, okay. water soluble charcoal. And they've got uh -huh. them in, in a few different colors. So basically I draw with that and then I pick up the brush and I go wild with the water. And, and I love the water because you never know what you're going to get. So yeah. it surprises me. Sometimes I'll look at the picture that I've done without, without water on it and I'll think, oh, that looks good like it is. Maybe I won't put the water. And then I'll bugger it. <laughs> I do Just anyway. put it on. And um, I, so sometimes I like to wet the paper first and then I'll start drawing because that oh. creates different oh. techniques as well. Um, cool. a, a fellow artist, Brett, once said to me, um, <laughs> you should put some color in your work. Mm. And that's when I started, I that's when I started using colour. So these days, I, I, I tend to, um, I tend to use colour in most of my work these days. Yeah. So it's definitely evolved over time. Um, I've I've had a few people say to me um, that my, some people said to me that my work reminded them of Egon Schiele. Okay. And uh, at the time, I thought, oh, okay. And then I started looking at his work, and I loved his work. <laughs> so maybe now, I'm, now that I. I know who he is and more aware of his work. Maybe I'm influenced a little bit by his work, but um, awesome. he's definitely a favourite. Um, as is Francis Bacon. Okay. I love Francis Bacon's work. Awesome. No, that's all. It seems like you're just influenced by like you by a lot of good artists that have helped uh, change and like adapt to adapted to your style over time. And it yeah. sounds really awesome. Like how you went from one to another and. It's, I definitely see that. I love your, I love the colors that you bring out in your work. Like I, especially from Dante, so when you did Dante's Inferno, I think it was the main one that really stuck for me was my hands. Oh, the one where the you just, blood? yeah, that was yeah. just amazing how you. you just, it just such vibrant colors and the red stands out. It's like, whoa, you know, and yeah. you just focus on the one particular body part. You didn't focus on the pose. You just focus on just yeah. one particular. So, sometimes I do that. I'll, I'll look at the model and if I don't necessarily like the pose, mm. um, sometimes I'll think, actually, I really like the hand, so the hand will be in, a, in an unusual position. Yeah. And it's a bit of a challenge because it always is a challenge drawing hands, but mm. 
you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, yeah. And it's the same with faces. Faces can be a challenge, but the more you try to concentrate on it. Mm. And sometimes I find with my drawing I can get a bit impatient. Okay. Um, and I find that if you're doing the face or hands or feet, you can't really be impatient. You've got to have that patience and... Yeah. I, I try to look more at the subject than what I'm drawing, so oh. I'll make a concerted effort to to watch what I'm drawing rather than just watching the paper. I mean, yeah. it, it, every artist is different, but you see some people who are just Stuck. looking at what they're drawing and they're not actually looking at the yeah. subject. So, but I mean, everyone works differently. Yeah, so you mainly uh, focus on, so obviously if you've got a model in front of you and you've got your canvas, mm. your eyes are more fixated on the model itself and then you're letting your hand kind of move with That's the... what I, I try yeah. to do, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but I, I find that I never have one area that I start. Maybe if anything it's possibly the head, but... I never know the dimensions of what I'm going to do because I think once upon a time I was stuck in, in the idea that you had to put the whole body mm. in the piece of paper. I don't do that anymore. I like to branch out. So I, I might start drawing the head and then I'll realise, oh shit, the head's bigger than it, <laughs> than it were. And, and so I don't get much of the body because I've taken up too much of the space with the head. Yeah. And so it's an evolving... <laughs> Thing, so I don't necessarily plan how it's going to plan look ahead. on the paper, it just, uh, it just evolves of its own accord. Oh, that's interesting. So it's kind of like it, your hand does the work and then whatever comes out, it, like, it just evolves naturally. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. No, that's really awesome. And so like, have you had many opportunities to exhibit your work? Have you had many? Um, you know, I, I have had a few. Uh, so back when I was doing a lot of work in, in the mid-2000s, I had an exhibition at... Um, there used to be a bar in Brunswick Street called the Ginger Bar. Okay. Yeah. And it was near the corner of uh, Brunswick and Johnson Street, and mm. opposite uh, where Dangerfield is there. Oh, and, um, okay, yeah, yeah. Upstairs is where I did a lot of drawing. So one of my earliest mentors from then, who I went to a lot of his sessions, was an artist called... Um, uh, his artist's name was Giotto, but it was Janusz, so okay. a, a Polish guy. So he, he was a big influence on me then, and, and he taught me um, oil painting as well back then. So he had some space at the top um, of this bar, and mm -hmm. they agreed that I could have an exhibition there. Uh, wow. So that was probably in about 2004. Um, I entered a few pieces of work in the Laird's Men on Men Art competition, which they ha used to have every year in June, and managed to sell uh, uh, a few things there. Uh, and my last solo exhibition was at the end of 2017. Oh, wow. Um, so instead of going tr for a traditional gallery, um, mm -hmm. Uh, my friend Nina put me in contact with a guy who had this amazing house in Malvern. And the house used to be famous for big exotic parties that he'd have. Okay. Um, and it was a great space. So that was a joint exhibition, um, another artist, Roz, and myself. Uh, and so that was really good. It's definitely expensive having your own exhibition, but, uh, yeah. but it's worth it. <laughs> Oh, I bet it would be like I um I've even thought of doing it myself, but then you look at the prices and you're just like, oh my gosh, why? Exactly. That's so much money. And you've got a factor in framing. And... Exactly, and you know, so it's but it would be worth when you finally. I guess it would be a really good satisfaction when you see like after spending all the money and you know putting it all together, and you finally see everything up. You you would have a very big happy satisfaction that yeah. you finally you know your work's up there yeah, <laughs> for everyone to right. see. Now that that's really awesome. I like. I I was really excited that you were. Um, I think it was what was it early twenty twenty when you painted myself and Charlie that image of us back to back. And oh, that with one, that intertwined. Yeah, that one was yeah. such a beautiful photo. And didn't you end up selling that one as well for John? Um, yeah, which <laughs> who who you modelled with. Um, yeah, John bought that. Yeah, no, that, that was actually a funny story because that's actually how we got in contact for the first time. Was when I saw that, I actually messaged him saying, "Oh, you know, 
thank you for purchasing this print as well. Like that's yeah. amazing. And then we just start talking from there, which is kind of funny how it's interesting how just these small things just connect us all together. That's and right. We just end up meeting each other. And then as you know, I modeled with him for Dante's Inferno, which was yeah. really cool. And, and it's great that in Melbourne, especially there's such a network of artists and oh. not everyone necessarily knows each other, but mm. you will know one person who will know that person. And oh. so, we don't necessarily know everybody else, but a lot of no. us know each other, and, and in that, and especially with social media and, and Instagram, I think so many artists follow each other. They may not have necessarily met in person, but yeah, that's it. They all tend to follow each other's work. Absolutely, and it's like it is a very close community. Like as you said, like even if we don't know everyone we know of them but we haven't met them in person yeah and so it's always nice like when you go oh have you heard of this person it's like oh yeah no i know that person right there and it's yeah. like oh i'm actually good friends with that one you know and it's like because yeah. we're such a close community and but then it still as you said there was just so many artists like even when i i know when i started i was like oh my gosh there's so many people in this community it's yeah. insane but I, as they say like for australia like melbourne's definitely one of the places to go to when it comes to the art. I've mm. always heard from everyone going, no, come to Melbourne for art. Yeah. It, there's a lot of people that it's, um, there's a lot of people in this community. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing community. And uh, so I'll ask you for a final question. What are your plans for this year? Like, do you have any uh, exhibitions coming up? Do you have anything um, that you're planning on doing? Well, finally you asked that. I, I do. So um, I am having an exhibition in June. Of awesome. this year. Um, hopefully, and I say hopefully, nothing's been signed as yet, but um, <laughs> it will most likely be work from 2020, so I'm not sure whether I'm going to call it a lockdown <laughs> <laughs> or an online Zoom lockdown exhibition, but um, I did have a lot of plans for last year actually before um, this all happened. Last year, my big plan was to go big. Yeah. So I wanted to start using big. Uh, canvases because um, oh, wow. I, I was interested in, in doing painting last year mm -hmm. um, made, start off with acrylics and I'd, I'd got a couple of really large pieces of canvas and then I thought with my drawing I'd try to go large where possible unfortunately COVID happened and um, I could have still done that at home but I was actually living interstate for much of uh, last year yeah. and so it wasn't really practical uh, so this year I haven't made any um, resolutions, if you will, other than um, I, I fell into having this exhibition um, yeah. when the slot came up in, in June. So I'm really looking forward to that. Absolutely, that sounds amazing. And you'll have to let me know when that happens because I'll definitely be advertising myself on my links and all that sort of thing. Oh, and cool. also Thank I'll give, put a link in this video as well when it the date is announced and all that, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, and that sounds Thanks, amazing. Man. And well, as they say, like, um, you know, even though you weren't able to do the campus thing this year, uh, last year, maybe this year might be an opportunity to revisit that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so definitely keep posting. All the best for all your projects coming up this year. Sounds awesome. Thank you very much. It's been good talking to you, no, Jason. Same with you. And so thank you so much for just inviting me to your home and talking about this. It was really good. Yeah, good. I enjoyed it. It's good. It's really good. Um, so everyone watching, uh, thank you so much for watching. I will leave links to all Lyndon's uh, art pages, you know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, all those sort of things so they can check out your amazing work. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode.